For 100 years, Washington State has had a cheat code. It's infinite cheap hydroelectric power. This is what built Boeing, built Microsoft, and created the amazing Seattle Metro that we have today. And it has subsidized your cost of living. But as of right now, that era is dead. We are staring an energy cliff in the face right now, a shortfall of nine gigawatts by 2030. For perspective, that is the entire state of Oregon is missing from our grid right now. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how AI is eating all the electricity, your electric bill is getting ready to double, and we might only have two technologies that could save us from rolling blackouts. And if you own real estate in some specific areas that we're going to talk about, or you want to invest in them, I think these are going to be great places here in the future here in Washington. I'm Anton Setner. I am a real estate entrepreneur here in Washington. We've been selling real estate for over 20 years. We've done thousands of transactions. We own real estate companies that do brokerage, new construction, land development, and investing. And I love looking at data and everything here in Washington State. So I went and nerded out on this energy topic because one thing that really concerns me here is we are creating unsustainable energy demands because we build houses. And as I'm building houses, I'm looking at these new energy codes. And even though these homes are more energy efficient, we are building them to suck down more energy. So for example, in each new home that we build right now, we have to put in a plug for an EV charger. Now I like electric cars. I think they're actually kind of cool and a great idea, but that's just one more thing that's pulling off of the electric grid on a regular basis basis. And these changes in power supply are basically heading us into the perfect storm. We're moving from surplus into scarcity. Washington state is headed towards a structural collision. We're retiring some of our coal right now. The company is called Trans Alta. They're out of Canada and they run the coal-based power plant there in Centralia. And we're retiring that because of CETA mandates. And you go, what is CETA? The Clean Energy Transformation Act Washington State Legislature passed in 2019. This heads us to 100% clean energy for the utilities serving Washington State by 2045 and a complete phase out of the coal fired power generation by 2025, AKA this year. And at the exact same time, we have decided to electrify everything. We have electric cars, we have electric heat pumps, you have more than one TV, you've got multiple computers, Homes are requiring more power and more energy, even though they're becoming more energy efficient themselves. We used to worry about winter heating. Now we worry about dual peaking systems, where what happens is in the summer, you've got the AC blowing, which is sucking down a lot of power, and you have low flow at the hydroelectric dams, which is heading towards disaster. Every week, I like to break down economics, data, policy, things that are affecting us here in Washington state. So you don't get blindsided. If you can hit that subscribe button to protect yourself, your family and your portfolio in the future. So you will know first what's happening here in the state, because these are major changes that we're doing to power that's affecting your power bill today. As we move from cloud computing to AI eating everything or AI taking over the world. I need you to start thinking about what kind of power does this consume? Because when it's not just the cloud anymore, we're talking about cognitive computing. The math is a standard server rack uses about five to 10 kilowatts. An AI training rack is gonna use 100 kilowatts, AKA one AI Google search or one AI powered search is gonna cost you 10X the energy. And these data centers as they're coming online are signing NDAs so utilities won't even know they're coming until it's too late. By 2030, these data centers will consume as much power as the entire aluminum industry did at its peak. So big tech is getting the power to train the next chat GPT, but who's paying for the next set of transmission lines? Guess what? It's not the big companies. It's not Microsoft. It's not Amazon. It's not Google. It's you, the taxpayer, who is going to be paying for this. There are two things I want you to be thinking about in regards to this. Farming and the consumer, AKA the rate payer. 
These utility companies have to build billions in infrastructure to serve these giant tech giants. And these costs are now getting socialized, meaning your rates go up and they get to keep the profits. And then we have farmers in the Columbia Basin that need electricity for irrigation. If rates spike by 20% in those areas, that is something that's gonna cause a local farm to go under. Then of course you have the moral questions. In a blackout, who would get cut first? the hospital, the cold storage for apples here in Washington, or the data center training in AI mode. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Drop homes or data center into the comments so you think who should get cut first. And I know this sounds grim, but there's a massive opportunity hiding inside of this crisis where there's two technologies that I believe are gonna see a gold rush here in Washington state to help figure out our upcoming power problems. But before we go there, we have to deal with this green deal, this climate pledge paradox that I'm gonna say is just a hypocrisy. See, Washington wants to be 100% clean by 2045, but wind and solar are intermittent, and these data centers need power 24-7, 365, all the freaking time. And the dirty secret, and this is why I'm calling this a hypocrisy, is to keep the lights on, we are buying from unspecified market power from other states. And guess what that is? It's usually just coal or gas from Utah or Wyoming. We are sitting here in Washington state market washing, just kind of, oh, everything's clean, it's okay, pretending to be clean while outsourcing the pollution so we can claim zero emissions. Come on, everyone, that's just BS. The solutions I believe that we have to this problem, of course, are wind and solar, and I think we should throw as much of that out there as possible. The sun makes up like 99% of the mass of our whole freaking universe. It is the largest energy producer out there. Let's get more solar going. But the problem is, is that is intermittent. So we have two solutions that are not intermittent. That is SMRs and geothermal. SMR stands for small nuclear reactor. Nobody likes the word nuclear. and We are scared of it from propaganda leftover, but that's really clean energy today. We have to fast track the development of these. We've got to get more of these built and online. These SMRs are safe they're not gonna melt down and explode. And they're definitely not as big as they used to be. But the problem is to get one permit, it takes forever. If you wanna like go down a rabbit hole, go look at how much power China is currently producing and scheduled to produce. They're going to outproduce us here in the United States. In order for us to compete on the global level, we are going to have to make literally 10x the amount of power that we have. The amount of cheap, abundant power will determine how far we go in AI. And I really like AI, but I don't want consumers to have to foot the bill for AI. So we've got to come up with solutions that prevent that from happening to you. The second one is deep geothermal. Drilling deep into the cascades, you can use the earth as a built-in boiler. It's always on energy and it's clean, renewable energy. And as a real estate guy, I'm thinking, well, what is the upside potential? What's gonna benefit here? Just take a look at Quincy over there in the Columbia Basin. That's where my dad is from. It was literally a one horse town. Quincy has massively benefited in their tax basis and in their property values by data centers and people moving there to work inside of these data centers. So be looking to Eastern Washington, places that are near the Columbia River that have the cheap hydroelectric power for now. And that's gonna include Richland, Moses Lake, Quincy, Wenatchee, et cetera. There is going to be some great buying and investing opportunities there in the future. And if you guys want to chat more with us about that, you can reach us at resg.com. And in conclusion, and kind of thinking about the next steps and where we are and what's moving forward, the era of the surplus energy in Washington state is over. We've got to treat energy now like a finite resource. And it's going to get more expensive and it's going to get bumpy until 2030. But Washington state has the tech, the resources, the knowledgeable people to be able to solve this problem. So this is not all doom and gloom, but we've got to get ahead of this. And we have to start looking at other alternatives such as geothermal 
and the small nuclear reactor as ways to augment the grid here so that the grid doesn't experience blackouts or brownouts at possibly here in the future. If you like videos like this that are analysis on Washington State, how it's affecting us and how we can move forward together, then click that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Drop any questions and comments below and we will do our best to get back to each and every one of you.